Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about cherubism. In our previous lectures we have studied about ossifying fibroma, fibrous dysplasia, osseous dysplasia and central giant cell granuloma and today we will discuss about cherubism. It is a rare developmental jaw condition and it is autosomal dominant condition. Okay, It is most commonly present in males. Sporadic cases also can occur and are thought to represent spontaneous mutations. The gene for cherubism was mapped to chromosome 4p16, but the molecular pathogenesis of cherubism remains poorly understood. Why we call it cherubism? It is because the facial appearance is similar to that of the plum-cheeked little angels depicted in uh, Renaissance paintings. Here you can see the cheeks looks like this. Okay. So, although cherubism also known as the familial fibrous dysplasia, but cherubism has no relationship to fibrous uh, dysplasia of bone. Now, we will uh, we'll discuss about the clinical and radiographic features. It is most commonly present in patients who are uh, 2 to 5 years of age and in mild cases, uh, the diagnosis can be there in the patients who are 10 to 12 years of age. The clinical alteration typically progress until puberty. Uh, then stabilizes and slowly regress. So, in a patient of cherubism, the clinical alterations they will uh, progress until puberty, and after that, it will stabilize and will regress slowly. The cherub like myofascias is due to bilateral involvement of the posterior mandible that produces angelic chubby cheeks. One more characteristic that is uh, present in the patients who are uh, having cherubism is uh, eyes upturned to heaven and it is due to a wide uh, you know rim of exposed mesclera noted below the iris below the iris okay this is due to involvement of the infraorbital rim and orbital floor that uh, tilts uh, the eyeballs upward as well as the stretch of um, uh, the upper facial skin that pulls the lower lid downward here you can see the image of a patient uh, uh, that shows the typical uh, you know a cherubic fish is resulting from bilateral expansile mandibular and maxillary lesions. Okay, in some cases there uh, can be you know marked cervical lymphadenopathy. Mostly they are painless. They causes bilateral expansion of the posterior mandible that tend that tends to involve the angle and ascending rami. Okay, they causes the expansion and those expansion are bilaterally symmetrical. In severe cases, most of the mandible is involved. In milder cases uh, present in the maxilla, it will cause uh, the um, swelling or expansion over the tuberosity areas. In severe cases, the entire maxilla can be affected. Okay, if we talk about uh, uh, cherubism uh, and uh, it causes the ex extensive bone involvement, there will be you know widening and distortion of the alveolar ridges, and it may lead to aesthetic and psychological effects. And there will be enlargement, uh, uh, and it may cause uh, tooth displacement or failure of eruption, impaired mastication, create speech difficulties, or really lead to loss of normal vision or hearing. In very rare cases, there may be unilateral cherubism, mostly they are bilateral. Okay, if we talk about radiographic features, there will be, you know, typically multilocular expansile radiolucency is present. The appearance is virtually diagnostic and as a result of their bilateral location. Very less uh, or less commonly, there will be unilocular radiolucency is present. Mostly, they, they involve the jaws and in some cases, the other bones may also be involved that includes ribs and humerus. There is no any biochemical findings present in cherubism. If the laboratory results do not uh, suggest the diagnosis of hyperparathyroidism, then most children with multiple uh, symmetrical giant cell granulomas represent example of cherubism. Here we can see the panoramic radiographs of a, a, of a child that is 7 years old, white boy. There is you know, bilateral, uh, bilateral multilocular radiolucencies uh, present in the posterior mandible. Here we can see these radiolucencies over this area, this area and here we can see this area this area okay same patient after you know six years uh, the lesion in the mandible rami demonstrates significant resolution here we can see it shows a resolution we cannot uh, see those radiolucencies and here but those radiolucencies uh, some of the radiolucencies may be present in the body area here so it will uh, regress with time as well 
Okay, histopathological features, they are similar to those of the isolated giant cell granulomas and they seldom permit a specific diagnosis of cherubism in the absence of clinical and radiographic information. Vascular fibrous tissue containing variable numbers of multinucleated giant cells. The giant cells tend to be small and usually aggregated vocally. The giant cells in cherubism express ma markers suggestive of osteoclastic origin. Foci of extravasated blood, uh, blood are commonly present. The stroma in cherubism often tends to be more loosely arranged than that seen in the giant cell granuloma. This is uh, one characteristic that can, you know, differentiate uh, the cherubism from that of this uh, giant cell granuloma because here the stroma uh, will be, you know, more loosely arranged. So in some cases, cherubism reveal eosinophilic cuff-like deposits surrounding small blood vessels throughout the lesion and it is specific to that of the cherubism but in many cases it may not be present so the absence of uh, these eosinophilic cuffing uh, may not exclude the diagnosis of cherubism you should keep this point in your mind now we'll discuss about treatment and prognosis uh, if you talk about prognosis it is unpredictable mostly uh, you know there will be remission and involution after puberty so we have to wait uh, until puberty by the fourth decade, the facial features of most patients approach normalcy. In occasional patients, the deformity can persist throughout the life. Okay? The question of whether to treat or simply observe a patient with cherubism is difficult. There may be some excellent result in some cases uh, you know, where there was early surgical intervention with curettage was done. But in other cases, it causes rapid regrowth and worsening the deformity. Use of calcitonin in severe cases uh, is there, can be there, but such therapy awaits further study. So we have to wait for further studies if we want to use calcitonin. Radiation therapy is contraindicated because of the risk of development of uh, post-radiation sarcoma. So we cannot use the radiation or it will lead to uh, development of sarcoma. The optimal therapy for cherubism has not been determined yet. So these are the references. Hopefully you enjoyed my lecture. So if you enjoy my lecture, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, until further video, take care and bye-bye.